Jersey in the Channel Islands. Beautiful, interesting, and an unusual location for this year's driving force. You know, in the past, we've taken you up to ski resorts and through tank testing courses, through forests. This is very different, though. 100 miles south of Britain in the English Channel or thereabouts, surrounded by water. And there's a clue for the sort of test we have coming up for our competitors later on. The vehicles are very unusual and with completely unpronounceable names. So I'll give Murray Walker that job. Yes, we've got uh, a truly astounding range of international vehicles for driving force this year. How about uh, German Mercedes Unibonds, all-purpose trucks? Then there are Japanese Isuzu Troopers. They'll go virtually anywhere, too. British Trials cars, big wheels on the back, little wheels on the front. Are they going to be able to get up the hills? American Dingoes, single-seater racing cars, ideal for sand. Then there are the British Isakos, multi-wheeled, go-anywhere, do-anything, very special vehicles and we even have a milk float. And to drive them a tremendous variety of stars, we have two Formula One drivers, a world champion motorcyclist, a world champion rally driver, a pop star, a boxer, and a couple of TV presenters. Let's meet them. First of all, from Northern Ireland, former multiple world champion on motorbikes, Joey Dunlop is teamed up with his fellow countryman, former world champion boxer, Barry McGuigan. World-class Formula One and sports car racer Jonathan Palmer is teamed with Mark King from pop group Level 42. Swedish Grand Prix driver Stefan Johansson finds his partner in TVAM and holiday programme presenter Kathy Taylor. And double world rally champion from Finland, Ewa Kankanen is teamed with Philip Schofield going live. Driving Force 89 starts on the western side of the island. Behind me, St. Juan's Bay, with its quite magnificent five-mile beach. But over my right shoulder, a deep valley. It is the scene of the first of our six events spread over two days. It is the scene of the sporting car trial. I think you've got the worst task of all to be first. Yes, I know. I don't know why I picked number one out of the hat, but uh, there you go. Talking of hats, you've got a rather stylish hat to wear, haven't you? It's the official trials hat, yes. What do you think? It's white with the brown speckles. Absolutely, it's, uh, I might look the part. I don't think I'll uh, manage to get through the first stream. I'll have to see if I can score one point anyway. John Taylor, the event referee, with the States of Jersey flag for event number one, as they head towards the river or the stream for the first time. An exercise of dexterity, featherweight touch on the throttle, a bit of bouncing from uh, Stefan to get them clearly through gate one there. As they head towards gate two, not giving it too much throttle, using those fiddle brakes on the right-hand side of the car, she's got to uh, use those to help them through the turns, like as they come up now to gate number two, going cleanly through there. And Kathy Taylor takes her way up the hill to gate number three, and it's come to a halt. She scored two not points. If she can only find a way of getting it forward, she could score three, but the engine has stopped. They are out of the competition. So, two clear gates for Kathy Taylor and Stefan Johansson. And next up, Barry McGuigan and Joey Dunlop. McGuigan's got the right idea here. The passenger should be a little bit more lively than Stefan Johansson was on that first run, using his body weight to help that car get up this hill. Well, here's somebody I won't be making any critical remarks about, Barry McGuigan. Beautiful drive so far. He's totally new to this, of course, but he's really got the feel for it, and his fellow Irishman, Joey Dunlop, is doing exactly the right thing as a passenger because he's bouncing, getting his weight in the right place through gate six. This is an absolutely superb drive. Barry McGuigan now is on an adverse camber through gate seven. Nice one, Barry. And this looks as though it's going to be a clean climb. No, I spoke too soon. Nine points scored, stationary. But if he's got it rolling, he's got it rolling. Just a, just a few six inches he made. But the engine stops, and that is a superb nine points for Barry McGuigan. Max is through after that. <laughs> Next up here, it's going to be Philip Schofield with Ewa Kankinen. Phil, you are looking slightly on the nervous side. We've, we've spent a lot of time talking about this. We've spent a lot of time discussing it. We've watched the other teams very closely. And really, I've decided that there's not a lot can help me. <laughs> it's, I mean, I used to be a farmer before, so I know very well these kind of things. And I have been driving in the mud, but with a tractor. So I try to go drive for him as well as I can. Okay. 
and what a combination. Philip Schofield from going live, Hugh Kankinen, world rally champion, through the river for the first time. Complete difference in weight, Phil quite light on one side of the car and Hugh are quite a heavily built man. Uh, give you some good instruction there saying go for the dry the trick on sporting trials apparently is to keep off the black the black is the slippery stuff gate two uh, philip has made the same mistake that kathy taylor made he's given it too much welly as he came out of two and into three the engine has stopped and philip schofield has scored two points in spite of all that good instruction from you harkankanen we've got one more pairing to go it's mark king of level 42 with formula one driver jonathan palmer you've been psyching yourselves up for this competition haven't you well uh, it's funny but we, we sort of we are taking it quite seriously i think that um i'd really like to win this and uh, we'll have to see how we do if i, if I don't get further than gate two i'm gonna have a blubber all right so you turn that camera off they've got through gate one and a good bit of progress along the valley floor right hand turn through gate two this is the stumbling point they're through gate three they're up there oh the hat's off the competition's obviously getting very hot but they've actually made it through gate three before they've come to a halt murray do you think they'll make it any further there's no way they're going to get out of that because the left rear is digging deeper and deeper and deeper get out and push Shut up! There was some debate there as to whether Jonathan Palmer was actually bouncing or trying to get out of the car. But either way, it's three gates. Now we go back through in reverse order using the professional drivers. So first to go will be Jonathan Palmer. Yeah. Jonathan Palmer is used to over 600 horsepower under his right foot. He hasn't got anything like that now, but he's a man of great dedication and application, and my goodness, it is showing. Six points now, coming up to gate seven, which is where he goes right-handed in the adverse camber. Remember that Barry McGuigan is the highest scorer so far with nine points, as Jonathan Palmer, with Mark King, positioning himself to get his weight in exactly the right position, the left rear wheel is spinning but they've got traction again momentarily Jonathan jiggling with the fiddle brakes on the right hand side the flag is up seven points for Jonathan Palmer and that means ten points for the combined Jonathan Palmer Mark King team world rally champion Ewa Kankanen into the water splash for the first time heading for gate one a man who excels with four-wheel drive machinery in the rally world, whether it was for the Lancia team or for Toyota team this year, he is just absolutely brilliant. One of the flying fins behind the wheel. He's through gate two. He's through gate three. He is doing a very fast time. If we were doing this on the stopwatch, it would be really good, but it's not. It's on clear gates, and they're going well. Juha Kankanen had never seen a trials car before this morning, and look at the way he's going. Twice a world champion for Peugeot and Lancia in rally driving. Through gate six, looking absolutely effortless. If he gets past gate eight, and he's past gate seven now, he and Philip Schofield will be tying for the lead with Jonathan Palmer and Mark King. And they're through gate eight, up to gate nine. This is where McQuiggan failed. And they're bouncing madly and backwards. So, Yuha Kankanen ties with Barry McGuigan for highest up the Jersey Hill so far with a marvellous nine points. Look, slow down. What's the story here? That great run for Kankanen actually puts Philip and him into the lead now with 11 points or 11 clear gates overall. And the pairing who can upset that for them are coming up next. In the passenger seat, Barry McGuigan and driving Joey Dunlop. The man driving is more at home with the front two wheels of the car than the rear two wheels because they're motorcycle wheels and he's one of the all-time motorcycle greats, Joey Dunlop, one of the great characters, one of the great champions, world champion, marvellous at the Isle of Man TT, through the second gate and through the third gate. That gives them the unassailable position of winning the sporting trials, but let's see how far they go. Ireland leads in Jersey, and now Joey Dunlop's challenge is to do the whole course clean and in the process beat his teammate Barry McGuigan 
who got through nine gates. Now Do Joey Dunlop is through gate six, a man with a natural talent for mechanical sport. Five times a world champion, 13 times winner of the TT. Gets his cap knocked some skew by Barry McGuigan. Now this is the critical point. Ba Barry McGuigan really needs to bounce to give Joey Dunlop the grip, and he's found it, but he's in trouble. He's in real trouble. Right wheel, right rear spinning and McGuigan needs to be on the other side. This is where Barry McGuigan needs to put his weight on the right-hand side. You can see that Joey, ah, oh, he's given up, rolls back with seven points to give them a total of 16 and a very convincing victory in the sporting car trial. Round one's over, seconds out, round two. Event two will take us down to the seaside, away from the countryside of event one in just a moment. There are 10, 7, 4 and 2 points available to the teams after each event of driving force. So the leaderboard now looks like this after event one. Joey Dunlop and Barry McGuigan doing well there with those 10 points. Stefan Johansson and Kathy Taylor losing out, I think, because they were first round the course. And the dark horses there, Palmer and King and Kankadon and Schofield, we'll see what they come up with later on. Here's Murray. Driving force is about having fun with power, and Jersey is very largely about sand. And here we're going to combine the two, and we're going to have that fun with an absolutely astounding vehicle. This is it. It's called a Unimog. It's made by Mercedes-Benz. It's powered by a straight-six engine, which developed some 125 horsepower. It has 16 gears. Now, we're going to do a bit of slaloming here, Change down. Been inadvertently started the wipers up, as you can see. And you can see I'm having to do a lot of arm work here. That help, I can really, really feel that 125 horsepower going down. We're going to dodge around this barrel here, I think. Indeed we are. We've got to keep the revs up as much as I can. That's affecting the steering. Now, round again. Whoops. Lost the steering wheel. Oh, steady boy. Woo. With the Corbier Lighthouse in the background on St. Juan's Beach on the seaside of the course with the green background to their names, that one is Jonathan Palmer and Mark King in the driving seat on the left-hand side. On the coast side, there we are, Stefan Johansson in the driver's seat on the left-hand side of the truck and uh, Kathy Taylor is with him and they will swap over at the changeover point. So they're off. Two big, massive four-wheel drive vehicles, and very much the professional against the amateur. The pro is on this side, the one with the red name, but in fact, it's the amateur who's gone in front. Mark King from level 42 has taken the lead just slightly from Stefan Johansson as they come to the first turn. Yes, and this is the difficult bit, into the barrels and then out of them. And this is something very new for both of them, Mark King and Stefan Johansson. And Stefan having to work very hard indeed. Last year, the dreaded Ligier in Grand Prix racing, and here today, the Unimog. And Stefan is really putting the power down, out of the bollards now. And heading back down the course, and in fact, Johansson has got it back again to the 360 turn around this bollard. It's Johansson with about five seconds on Mark King. But remember, there's still their teammates to come. It'll be Kathy Taylor taking over from Stefan and Jonathan Palmer, the Formula One driver, taking over from Mark King. Through the water, down through the start line area, off to the second turn, past the start line, and it's the 180 turn to come back. And look at this, it's neck and neck as they come up to the halfway point of the competition. A gear miss there for Mark King. Mark King has slowed up, and so Stefan gets about three seconds lead, but look, virtually neck and neck as they swap over now. So taking over will be Kathy Taylor. That's Stefan coming now. Stefan is directing Kathy Taylor as she reverses to the trailer. So, Stefan Johansson gesturing now to Kathy Taylor, who has taken over from him, but meantime, Jonathan Palmer is already in position as he backs up. 
Stefan is gesturing to Cathy Taylor. Let's see if they've made the hitch. They haven't. They've had to go forward. The automatic pickup hitch is not connected with Stefan Johansson and with them still trying. Away goes Jonathan Palmer. Now, Jonathan Palmer and Mike King streaking away because try as she may, Cathy Taylor cannot get it to connect. Yes, the, the link is all right. Stefan is up there, but they're driving away, but the pickup surely hasn't been made. I haven't seen the spigot go down. So that's the dramatic situation, Mike Smith. As they head off onto the course, we could be losing a trailer very quickly. Oh, and what a, what a moment there for the Mark King vehicle. That's Jonathan Palmer at the wheel, trying too hard round the far bollards on the slalom and getting the trailer right off the deck. But watch the Kathy Taylor vehicle. It's her driving now, and she has not got that trailer connected up properly. We're pretty certain that that could drop off on the first bump they come to. Now, Jonathan Palmer has calmed down, and he's out of the slalom. Heading for a 360. Yes, Murray. Mike Smith, I can tell you that the the right-hand Unimog has definitely not got the trailer connected up properly, so it's a moot point whether they're going to finish it as one unit. Well, they're going through the slalom now as Jonathan Palmer finishes off his 360 and heads towards the finish area. There's the finish. She's really handling this truck ever so well. But look at the way that trailer connection is dragging on the ground there. It is a miracle that it has not fallen off yet. Up to the finish line, a good 30 seconds, more than 30 seconds behind Jonathan Palmer and Mark King. And that's heat one. Victory there for Jonathan Palmer and Mark King. And in heat two, it's the two Irishmen, McGuigan and Joey Dunlop. Did Barry McGuigan miss a barrel? Well, that's for John Taylor to say. Tried, went the wrong course, unfortunately disqualified. Disqualified? So that means they finished last? They finished last, yes. Oh. Yeah, well, no, I, I mean, I didn't realise that we'd missed the baller. I thought I'd missed the baller, because I looked to my, le uh, to my left and then to my right, and uh, it's very deceiving because you come in so tight, you think, have, I, have, have I gone past that or have I not? So I must have missed one. The judge says on this one, on this one. So. The luck of the Irish has deserted you this time. <laughs> <laughs> so the final is underway now. It's an electric contest between Mark King and Jonathan Palmer and Philip Schofield and Hewer Kankinen. This is Mark King with Jonathan Palmer helping him out there with a the gear stick, I hope. and beating Philip Schofield and Ewer Kankinen. Mark King goes into the left turn. Schofield goes into the left turn. They come out of it. They're coming very closely up to the trailers. Mark King leading. Now, I presume they're going to change over and that Jonathan Palmer will be out of the passenger seat. Yes, Mark King is out. Jonathan Palmer is backing up. Schofield has lost the prop. The engine has died. Yakankanen has got to restart it. Meantime, Jonathan Palmer is already backing up to the hitch. Yuha Kankanen has got it organised, but not well enough. He starts to roll as a very cool and remorseless Jonathan Palmer, assisted by Mark King. They've done the hitch. You saw the trailer rise. Schofield is waving frantically to Yuha Kankanen, who's having trouble with the operating levers. Meantime, Jonathan Palmer is out on his own. Well, this is going to give us a fascinating situation in driving course. As Palmer roars towards the slalom, this means that if they carry on like this, we're going to have a draw for the lead on 14 points each. Now, Jonathan Palmer rattled round this slalom on the first run and got that trailer into orbit. He had the wheels well off the deck, but I notice he's taking it a lot steadier this time. He knows he's got time in hand. So it's a cruise back down to the finish line for Jonathan Palmer and Mark King. And what a turnover! We have a flip. Philip Schofield and Ewan Kankinen have flipped their trailer inside the slalom. There we are, Mark King with the silver crash helmet in the passenger seat. It's a good time as well. It's fastest time of the day. 
Well, it looks like a living disaster to me. Schofield out of the cabin and looking very sadly at the link that wasn't made satisfactorily. And it looks to me as though exactly the same thing happened to them as happened to the others earlier on, that the pickup was not made, the hitch did not automatically lock, the pin did not go down, and you can see the result. And despite that disaster, Hewitt Cankinen and Philip Schofield are flying high on the scoreboard over St. Juan's Beach. Two second places give them the joint lead on 14 points with Jonathan Palmer and Mark King, who won that last event. And let's now go to event three. Take a look at these. These are single-seater dingoes, eight horsepower, belt drive, automatic transmission, 45 miles an hour, 1,000 pounds will buy you one. the amateurs race, Yuha Kankanen in pole position has got it all to do with his teammate Philip Schofield having finished last in the amateurs race and Jonathan Palmer takes the lead with Stefan Johansson in second place. In third position it's Kankanen and down in fourth place it's Joey Dunlop and Jonathan Palmer is in the team which was in the joint lead after the Unimog race. So if Jonathan Palmer stays where he is, he is going to be in a very commanding position with his teammate Mark King, who finished second in the amateurs dingo race. And it is Jonathan Palmer, Formula One Grand Prix driver in the Tyrrell team, having driven in the Ram team before that, and the Zaxby team as well, who is leading. Now you can see the sand flying up from the rear wheels and Johansson goes through! Johansson goes through, but Jonathan Palmer's got the inside line and Stefan is really fighting back. And Kankanen is right up with them. This is good stuff. Jo Jonathan Palmer leads then with two laps completed, four to go, including the one that they're on. Yuha Kankanen fighting hard, trying to make up for the deficit after the amateur race is up in third position and Joey Dunlop is well down. Joey Dunlop in second place with his teammate Barry McGuigan after the Unibog race. And I remind you that Barry McGuigan won the amateurs race. So there is Palmer. And up in the second position now has gone Juha Kankanen. Where is Stefan Johansson? And the answer is that he is off the course, walking away out of the race and sharing Kathy Taylor's sympathy. So now this is lap four. It's close at the front, very close, because Kankanen is going for it, and he's through. Brilliant bit of passing. Yuha Kankanen, the rally world champion, is up with the three and a half litre atmospheric world champion in Formula One of 1987. Jonathan Palmer retakes the lead. My goodness, they are both really going for it. And these cars, which only produce eight horsepower, these dingoes, still produce some terrific racing. This is lap five. At the end of it, and they're coming up to the end of it now, it will be the sixth and last lap. It's going to be the difference between four points and three points for Palmer and Kankanen, who waves his hands in despair. And it looks to me as though Jonathan Palmer has got it made. Now he's on the reverse straight, Kankanen is closing. Yuha Kankanen, the Finnish Rally World Champion, is going for it on the last corner. Joey Dunlop is in a poor third position. Stefan Johansson is out of the race, but now the chequered flag is taken by Jonathan Palmer. Victory for Jonathan Palmer, four points. Yuha Kankanen in second position, Joey Dunlop in third place, and out of the race, but fourth is Stefan Johansson. You know, rally driver, up in yeah. all full up as it looked. Yeah, that was just fantastic. That was the most magnificent dice I've ever seen. It was just brilliant. And you're rough. Well, I, I, I had an unfair advantage, Mike, actually. The throttle had jammed open. What? The throttle had jammed open. It was fully open. I couldn't close it. So I just had to slow up on the brake now and again. 
You mean you went flat out all the yeah, way? Flat out. <laughs> Hewitt, you did a demon overtaking manoeuvre into that bottom corner there. They went up the inside and got cleanly through. It was brilliant. What, what happened from there on? No, I mean, you're, you are maybe a little bit lighter than me, but it's just <laughs> a bit faster than mine. And I always lost these five metres on the straight lines. Even I tried to catch it on the corners, but it's difficult to pass here. What happened to Stefan? No idea. <laughs> Never saw him. Then over behind. <laughs> Cathy, the pebble dash look is rather nice on the face. <laughs> I haven't looked in a mirror lately, Michael, I'm afraid. <laughs> Have you had a good first day? It's been great fun, yes. I think we, uh, we hope to score a few more points tomorrow, but uh, still to have lots of fun. Yeah, there's a lot of tactics going on here, aren't there? Well, yes, there's, there's one particular couple who are taking this very, very seriously. Not Jonathan <laughs> and Mark, surely? Not Jonathan and Mark, no. <laughs> well, yes, perhaps it is. <laughs> At the end of day one in the contest for the Shell Trophy, victory for Jonathan Palmer in the Dingoes gives the two Englishmen a clear lead. Ireland's Joey Dunlop and Barry McGuigan second, thanks to an easy win by McGuigan in the celebrities race. Kankanen and Schofield third, but Johansson and Cathy Taylor have got it all to do. There's a lot more to the island of Jersey than the beautiful scenes you may see on Bergerac on television. It's 100 miles south of mainland Britain, 14 miles from the coast of France, and covers some 45 square miles with over 500 miles of roads with a 40 mile an hour speed limit. A peaceful holiday can be had on Jersey. Just 80,000 people live on the island. The location for day one of driving force was this place, the five mile beach of St. Juan's Bay, which in summer is full of surfers. And we move around from the west coast to the south coast for day two, just by the town of St. Helier. The major attraction here for tourists being the uh, VAT free shops, no VAT in Jersey. The duty is considerably lower than in the United Kingdom. And they say about Jersey, it's nearer to France, closer to home. But the architecture, the customs, the language, the law, the landscape, the personal and the place names are all very different, except for Yvonne's. This haven for boaters is the harbour of St. Helier. And we move to the beautiful Elizabeth Castle for day two of driving force, set out on a causeway in the middle of St Albans Bay. Event four is something very different. It's a seemingly impossible parking contest with more vehicles than there are places for them. There are the competitors and in the yellow jacket, referee John Taylor, who's going to see that there is fair play, or at least he hopes he is. An amazing selection of vehicles, including eight-wheel and six-wheel Isarcos, a little three-cylinder tractor pulling the trailer, and more. So, we'll leave it running. So you've just got the handbrake to let go, and that's the problem. Okay? And if you want to up the overall gear... Mark King having another look at the little tractor. Lots of different gear shifts, handbrakes, steering wheels in funny positions, and look at the layout for the car park in Elizabeth Castle. Very tricky indeed. They're about to go off. First of all, Jonathan Palmer and Mark King, who have decided to send Jonathan to run and get the vehicles, while Mark stays back in the courtyard and measures things out. But to be honest, it's all a bit of an act, this, that they're doing. Because last night, while everybody else was relaxing, Jonathan Palmer and Mark King took up Jonathan's helicopter, little flight over Elizabeth Castle, had a look down into the courtyard from 500 feet up, and could see the layout for the event. We also saw them doing it, and we changed the layout of the event this morning without them knowing. So they're about to make a couple of mistakes. Mark's a pop, okay, a pop star rather than a baseball player rather than an athlete. I think he's too keen on the running. That's <laughs> <laughs> it. Yeah. We're supposed to go. Ah, oh, what a shame. Oh. Hello there, boys. Hello. Hello. So Mark's taken to running now. He's heading for the milk float. He was a milkman before he was a bass player. And Jonathan Palmer putting the Fiesta onto the trailer behind the Isuzu. That's mistake number one. Here comes Mark. If you were putting something on the trailer, what would you be putting on? Uh, either the milk float or the Sierra. The length of the third yeah. garage the is for the two Fiestas. That one. 
slight confusion for these two now. <laughs> the Finnish approach to car parking. So... Well, the perplexed Jonathan Palmer and Mark King have got it sorted out. They've got the Fiesta off the trailer, the Sierra onto the trailer, and this is the last vehicle to be fitted into the parking spaces. Mark King at the wheel of the incredible 6x6 Isarco. And when the wheels stop and John Taylor announces the end of the parking, the time will be announced, and it is 16 minutes and 39 seconds, a slow one. Philip Schofield could make up some good time here if only he could get to grips with this tractor load of Jersey daffodils. I think Gordon the Gopher's been having a go at it first. Bill, of course, has the extremely experienced partner, Hewitt Kankinen, the World Rally Champion, who is already inside Elizabeth Castle, getting to grips with the Ford Sierra and loading it correctly onto the trailer, but not loading it onto the trailer correctly. Joey Dunlop and Barry McGuigan have been already. They got a time of 12.23 and are relaxing, taking in some of the sights outside Elizabeth Castle, while all inside are slightly confused. But not Kankanen and Schofield, last vehicle in for them, the milk float, and it looks to me as though they're going to do an absolutely stunning time. Yes, 9 minutes, 18 seconds. This is Cathy Taylor and Stefan Johansson coming up now to finish. This is a very quick time indeed for them, almost the same as the last pair. In goes the milk float. Now, Cathy Taylor has got that, oh, lovely bit of parking by Cathy Taylor in the Osako, and the... Beautiful, just a, just a couple of feet, and that's it. Nine minutes, 21 seconds, three seconds only outside. What time? What time? Stefan, Cathy, nine minutes and 21 seconds. You were only three seconds slower, but you are in second place. Three seconds. After four events, we have a change on the leaderboard. Ewa Kankin and Philip Schofield, 28 points, take the lead from Jonathan Palmer and Mark King. It is getting exciting as we head for event number five. And while all that was going on, the tide has gone out to reveal the world-famous causeway between St Helier and Elizabeth Castle. And it is around the causeway that the last two events will be taking place. And the significant fact is that from now on, the tide is going to be coming in. So it is going to be a race against time. This is the Rally Point course. The professionals only will drive on this, marked out across the beach. It is very wet, and the car is uh, bogging down quite a bit in the water here. I'll drop down a gear. It is a four-wheel drive Isuzu Trooper. You can use two-wheel drive, but it'd be a brave man who tries to do this course in two-wheel drive. The idea is to pick the fastest route you can find between the bollards on the beach, and there's an awful lot of space to choose from. Well, this is the causeway. Now, it's all stone underneath here, and I'm now hitting 60 miles an hour in fourth gear over this stone. Not much room for error, because there's a lot of rocks, a lot of puddles, but this vehicle is really brilliant at this. Mark, what are you actually going to do on this side of the car while Jonathan's driving? Uh, well, there's been a lot of screaming. <laughs> uh, there will be a lot of uh, saying, no, 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 no. Uh, and generally just, oh, no, I'm going to say go for it, matey. And the trick here is to straight line the twisty course as much as you possibly can. Above all, keep out of the deep water and avoid the rocks. Five, four, three, two, one, go! And off they go. The four-wheel drive selected for Jonathan Palmer, Mark King of level 42 on the passenger side to do very little other than hang on as Jonathan swings it round through the course on one side of the beach before he comes back through the start line area to the other side of the beach and then races up the causeway. The sort of speeds we're looking at on this, I did a quick run beforehand. You can get about 50 miles an hour on the beach. There's quite a bit of drag from the water and the sand. Up the causeway, about 60 miles an hour in fourth gear. That's with four-wheel drive selected like Jonathan's doing at the moment. Here they come through the start line area. It's purely against the watch, uh, against the clock, and let's just take a look at the time so far as they came through there, about 35 seconds. 
aquaplaning their way out now into the wettest part of the course and disappearing from my sight into the sight of Murray Walker. Yeah, she oh, right. about, doesn't she? Stay out of the water. That's Jonathan it. Palmer, the man who has succeeded at every branch of motorsport that he's tackled. British Formula 3 champion, European Formula 2 champion, world champion in the Formula 1 three and a half litre class the year before last. Well on his way now. It's a 2.6 litre fuel injected petrol engine, 110 horsepower. He's got it in four wheel drive, of course. And at this point, I should think probably in fourth gear, as he splashes his way through a tremendous amount of drag from the water and from the soft sand underneath. So now he is threading his way round. He's got to go round the swimming pool, keep it hard to his right, which you can see between the car and you as the viewer now. Then he will double right and come along, and it's going to be a marvellous picture as we see Jonathan Palmer with Mark King alongside him, setting up the target time for the three other teams that are to follow as they parallel the world-famous causeway with St Helier itself in the background as they sprint towards Elizabeth Castle. And that's what you're going to be seeing any moment now. There it is. You can see the concrete ribbon of the causeway on its right, which not so very long ago was completely covered in water and very soon is going to be completely covered in water again. Again. 75 miles an hour up here. Put flat all the way. These are very big rocks too. Jonathan Palmer at the wheel, Mark King alongside him, and they cross the line. Derek Warwick drops the chequered flag. Formula One driver Derek Warwick, the man who won last year and the year before in driving force, and the total time was 2 minutes 32.98 seconds, and that is the target time for the next three teams. Next to go, Joey Dunlop and Barry McGuigan, Team Ireland here. Joey in the driving seat. We'll follow them from their point of view. Barry McGuigan in the talking or co-driver's seat there, giving the benefit of his experience of car racing, which he took up professionally a couple of years ago. Let's follow them. That's it. That's good. Hold on. 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 Tighten them. Okay. Come out wide for this one. Come on. At the time for Joey and Barry was 2 minutes 34.7 of some concern to Cathy Taylor and Stefan Johansson who got 234.4 and so far on the course nobody has broken the two and a half minute barrier. This is Ewa Kankinen, the World Rally Champion. You can see for yourselves the way the Isuzu is going. Kankinen's really absolutely got it on the limit. Double world champion both for Lancia and for Peugeot winner of the Paris-Dakar rally, winner of the Ivory Coast rally, and now he's on his way at the present moment to winning driving force 89, although the vital sixth event is still to come. But we are now looking for the check time of 1 minute 32, which was the fastest that we've had so far, and Kankanen's time is 1 minute 28 seconds. So, Juha Kankanen is four seconds ahead of the fastest time that we've had so far, Murray, remember on this that, uh, that what he's doing, he's looking for the dry parts of the beach. He's been very, very clever. Watch him through here now as he comes up towards the causeway. He is actually looking for the drier parts of the beach so there's less drag from the water. Onto the causeway. It's the run home now for Ewa Kankinen and Philip Schofield. Just missing a gull that took off at the start of the causeway. And they're on their way to you, Murray. Two minutes, 32 point. Nine is the target time for Juha Kankanen and Philip Schofield, who are leading driving force 89 overall after the first four events. And it's two minutes well ahead on time at the present moment. Really flying. Kankanen coming past the causeway now. You can see Derek Warwick with the flag outstretched. Past and down goes the flag. And the time for Juha Kankanen was two minutes, 26.2. So that is by full six seconds faster than Jonathan Palmer's fastest time. I am really happy because we were a little bit scared about the water because it started to come up, but it was all right, no problems. Were you happy about the line you took in everywhere? It looked perfect to us. Yeah, I was going quite okay because you had to, if you hit the water on sideways, you will lose a lot of speed, so you had to try to try to just go smoothly and nicely around. 
Great drive, well done. Philip, there wasn't much you could do there, but the next event that's coming up, it really is going to be a team effort, and you're yeah. leading overall. I'm looking forward to that. I mean, there are, there are moments in, in your life that someone provides you with something that you never, ever forget. This guy's just provided me <laughs> the most unbelievable moment. That was fantastic. After that thrilling run from Ewa Kankadon, that does him a load of good on the scoreboard. And look at the battle at the top end. There's still something in it here. 33 points in second place, Jonathan Palmer and Mark King. And 38 points at the top of the table, it's Ewa Kankadon and Philip Schofield. They have won the last two events here, the final one to come. And if they finish first or second on this final event, they will have won driving force overall. But the critical thing on this is the tide. Take a look over my shoulder. The tide is advancing rapidly into St. Albans Bay here at St. Helier. And Murray Walker will now tell us how our competitors are going to cope with that. The answer is with difficulty, because with the tide coming in fast, they've got to change wheels on a Ford Sierra using a pneumatic jack, then choose either a Unimog or an Isarco and race the tide to St. Helier. Go, and it is all action. Stefan out, Joey out, Juha Kankanen and Philip Schofield out, Jonathan Palmer out, the four bull bags are out. They are under the cars. If anything, Stefan Johansson and Kathy Taylor are slightly ahead. They're unreeling the tube which goes from the bull bag to the exhaust pipe. And already I can see the exhaust gases, and off comes the pipe from Stefan Johansson and Kathy Taylor's car, and from Juha Kankanen's car. But Joey Dunlop is already undoing the wheel nuts. Juha Kankanen's car has got, is the first one to have the wheels off the ground. And there's a valve inside the bull bag which locks it into the fully inflated position. Kankanen and Schofield are a long way ahead of everybody else, although the wheel nuts and all the other cars are being loosened. Maybe the others have done the right thing because they have loosened the wheel nuts while the wheel is on the ground. And now Jonathan Palmer and Mark King have got their car off the ground. The same thing with Joey Dunlop and Barry McGuigan. They are swatching, swapping wheels as I talk to you. Stefan Johansson is still loosening the wheel nuts on the rear of his Sierra whilst Kathy Taylor waits with the front wheel. And the water is almost up to the very edge of the concrete causeway. In fact, it is up to the concrete edge for a long way across. Now, how are they doing? Now, look behind me and you can see what I'm talking about. The water is already lapping the edges of the concrete causeway. And still, those cars are up. Still, the wheels are not on the ground, except that of Jonathan Taylor Jonathan Palmer and Mark King and they're ahead and they're making the dash for the car Mark King is going to claim he's claiming his car the Unimog so Mark King and Jonathan Palmer with Jonathan Palmer doing the driving are into the Unimog they've got their Sierra on all four wheels the bull bag is back in the boot so are the tools and Jonathan Palmer and Mark King are well away and don't forget that they are in second position overall after the first five. And the Unimog plowing through the water and the tide is coming in really fast. And still we have one, two, three Sierras. Now, McGuigan is getting ready. And so is Joey Dunlop. Their boot lead closes. So does that of Juha Kankanen and Philip Schofield. But Stefan Johansson and Kathy Taylor are left standing. So, Jonathan Palmer is going to win this, no doubt about that. Who is going to be second? In the Isarco, in the 8x8 Isarco, it is Joey Dunlop with Barry McGuigan. Chasing them hard in the 6x6 Isarco, Juha Kankanen and Philip Schofield. And Stefan Johansson and Kathy Taylor are getting away last in the second of the two Unimogs. And Mike Smith coming towards you, the leader, is of course Jonathan Palmer, then it's Joey Dunlop in the 8x8 Esarco, then it is Juha Kankanen, and as I say that, Stefan Johansson leaves in the second Unimog. And coming towards us, on the dry bit of the causeway, the only remaining dry bit of the causeway, is Jonathan Palmer to win this event. Now, I'm trying to do some rapid maths calculations here because this is going to give him 10 points to win this, which will take him to 43 points. In second place, 
if if Kankinen comes second, he still wins overall. We're looking to see whether Kankinen has got it. Who is that? It, who is that in second place? Because here comes Jonathan Palmer to win now. Jonathan Palmer gets 10 points, winning this event by an aquatic country mile. In third place, we think, is Ewa Kankinen and Philip Schofield. They have got to take out, they've got to get ahead of that other vehicle. And are they going to do it? How close can they get the one in second place? I think that's Joey Dunlop in second place, coming towards us now. Pushing his way, there's a heck of a bow wave coming there, but he's done it, he's got through. Now, where is Ewa Kankinen? Because we seem to have a tremendous run here now for Joey Dunlop. Jonathan Palmer and Mark King, they know, they know that they've got victory in sight. Joey Dunlop comes in second place and in doing so wins the contest for Jonathan Palmer and Mark King. Jonathan Palmer and Mark King. And there's a race to the line now for third and fourth. And Stefan Johansson has taken third place. They took the wrong vehicle. Philip Schofield and Ewan Kankin have got the wrong vehicle. They're languishing in fourth place. Third place then to Stefan Johansson. And fourth, losing driving force on the last event. Ewan Kankin and Philip Schofield coming in fourth place. Jonathan Palmer, Mark King. <laughs> Failing the officials saying you're disqualified for anything. <laughs> well, who knows? Insinuations. You appear to have won it. <laughs> we do appear to have done well. Yeah. This, this wasn't a plan, I must admit. As Mark did suggest, you were on the first test on the sporting car trial. Yes. But the, the wheel change seemed to really put you ahead. Well, whilst we thought about the, uh, the garage parking and came distinctly unstuck, I think thinking about the wheel changing did have, um, gave us a bit of a hand there. Philip, what actually happened to, to you and Ewa? Because from what I could hear from what Murray was saying, you were, you were doing really well on the wheel change and then it all went wrong. You broke it. You broke what? But it's got six wheels. How can you... You want to see the front one. The front one is a bit of a mess. So what, you hit something a bit hard? I don't know what happened, unfortunately. We were all right. We would have been third, but I mean, the puncture, unfortunately, right in that last straight coming down there, we had the Unimog and there was no problem at all, but, except the, but the puncture, unfortunately, slowed us down. You needed to get second place to, uh, to win outright. I know. Disappointing, but there you go. What a driving force. That superb win for Jonathan Palmer and Mark King in the race against the tide gives them overall victory. Down to second, go Kankinen and Schofield. Third, Joey Dunlop and Barry McGuigan. And the wooden spoon to Johansson and Taylor. And the applause is for Jonathan Palmer and Mark King, the outright winners receiving their awards. The silver salvers will be presented by Tony Holden, manager of retail trade relations for Shell UK, sponsors of driving force for the second year. And the runners-up, Ewa Kankinen and Philip Schofield. Mark King and Jonathan Palmer, Driving Force Champions, 1989.